So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowdus. So as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com I'd like to introduce you to the Summer Stunner Cotton Hat. This hat was actually designed for me. I made it for myself because I was liking the women's version of the Sun Hat so much because I was wearing it in the studio just as a tester and I thought I wanna make a hat that I would actually wanna wear for myself. So and this is more of a masculine version of the Sun Hat. What we have is two balls here of Bernat softy cotton and we're gonna be double stranding but the brim is actually triple stranded but you still only need two balls and when we get there I'll show you some tips. You'll use a four millimeter size uh, G crochet hook in order to play. Please make sure that you're watching the gauge so if you are gonna substitute your yarn just make sure you watch the gauge. What we have here is that we have a several uh, pattern information. At the time of filming this is the PDF but it has been, uh, the hat has already been mailed to Yarnspirations and it eventually it'll change to the Yarnspirations format in the future. So if you see a different format don't freak out. It is what it is. And so we have all the instructions of the blocking and all of that stuff here and there is a crochet diagram that I did because the one section can kind of get dicey on you and what it is it's these front post uh, trebles that come over and that's the line that you see in the hat. So do you see this arrow stitching? That's what that is. So I wanted to clarify what that is and when I blocked it I just put it down, uh, I dampened the hat, I put it down on a on a tea towel. I put a cup underneath so that it would stay up and then I spray starched it also just to give it a little more strength. So it's a really neat idea and we're gonna get started today and what I recommend to you if you're using variegated like I'm going to Here's my tip. To prevent the color pooling of variegated yarn and with double stranding what I'm going to do is that the one ball is gonna come from the inside of the ball and the other will be on the outside. So one ball will be on the floor here in a bowl so it'll just continually go and so the one strand is gonna come from the outside of this ball and the other one's gonna come from the inside so that they never to, uh, truly pool up together. So they always are changing over and over and over. So that's what we're gonna be using. The color that you see here is called the blue wave and this is an awesome time. So the women that you're seeing within this pattern are my testers that gave this a try. So have a good one and let's get started right now. As we get started today you'll see in the notes that we're double stranding so you can use the interior and the exterior of the same ball to get your two strands but because we know that we need two balls I'm using uh, the strands from each of the balls instead of double stranding just from the one. So that's just something that you can do and when we go to triple strand in the future what's gonna happen is that we're going to take the the other opposite end of the same ball and then we're going to grab that one and so then we'll have three strands. But So you only still need two. So some people in social media said that they want a bigger brim. You're going to need more yarn in order to do that. So we're gonna just stick with this and chain three at the beginning counts as a double crochet and chain two does not count as a stitch at the beginning of the round. Let's begin. Okay let's begin. Put the two strands together. Some people get really touchy when I use variegated yarn because it changes colors but just do the best that you can. So you're just going to just put the two strands together. Pretend that they are one. So this thickens it up a little bit. Well doubles it really but it's still thin yarn so it still maintains a really good feel. This yarn feels amazing on the hands. So to begin we're going to chain two. One and two. And second chain from the hook which is the beginning one that we started with I need you to put in five single crochets. So we're gonna say one and it's gonna be tight. Two, go right up over top of that straggler is three. Next one is four. Make sure that you do grab two strands at the same time. You will get used to it. I haven't double stranded for a week or so. So two, three and. So make sure that you do have your five by counting back. So one, two, three, four, five and then just slip stitch to the beginning and it will be tight the first time and just pull through and through and that's your beginning. If you went over top of your straggler you can just simply turn this around and just snip it and then move on. Two, round number two. In round number two chain one where, right where you are and in the same stitch that you did the join I need you to apply two single crochets. So one 
and two. So I'm gonna give you, start giving you repeat instructions that you'll do all the way around. So each one of these stitches, there's only five of them, will have two single crochets. When you get back around, please join to the first stitch. In this case, it'll be single crochet and then we'll start then the next round. In this case, it'll be round number three. So two single crochets in each. The stitch counts are provided to you on the PDF just in case you need that. So when you come all the way around, see this one here? This is the lead into the very first one. People think that's a stitch and as a new crocheter, I always assume that was a stitch and that's where my counts would always go wrong. So make sure that you only do see your five uh, groups of two and then just slip stitch to the beginning. So I'm going to assume that you will slip stitch to the beginning going forward. Just giving you this set of instructions to get yourself around and then move forward. So let's begin officially round number three. Round number three, same as round number two, chain one and then just put in two single crochets into each of the stitches all the way around and just verify that when you get around there will be 20 single crochets and just slip stitch to the beginning. So two singles in each. I'll see you at the end of round number three. Make sure you join it and we'll start on round number four in a moment. In round number four, we're going to do an increase but it's unique and it's what makes the flavor of the hat. So you're going to chain three that'll be your first double crochet. You're gonna come into your next stitch and double crochet and our increase is going to happen with the single crochet that'll be around the last post that you just did. So just go between the two, last two and single crochet. So you'll have a chain three which is a double crochet, another double crochet and then a single and so that gives you the counting of three. So to do the next repeat all you're going to do is that you'll put two double crochets in a row. So one and two and then the single crochet is going to be around the last post that you did and that's going to be round number four. So please do that all the way around and I'll be back in just a moment. As you're coming around in number four you're still maintaining your counts and do not forget that in order to maintain the count that you must do that single crochet around that second post in order to keep it and then just join it to the top of the first chain three. Okay, so let's move on to round number five. As we move on to round number five, you could go wrong in assuming that you're gonna skip an accidental stitch. So don't forget that in the row, in the round below you had a double crochet, double and then a single. So when you're skipping over stitches, make sure you don't forget about that single stitch that has been sitting there. So when you start, you're going to chain one and you'll single crochet in the first one which is the chain three. Then you're going to chain two, one and two and skip only one stitch which is the double crochet that's next and go into the single. And you're gonna repeat this going all the way around. So let's do our repeat that you have. So the repeat that we have is that you're going to single crochet in the next and then you're going to chain two, skip one and single crochet in the next which is the single crochet that's there. So the repeat just a reminder is a single crochet, chain two, skipping one and you're single crocheting into the single. So you just gotta keep in mind that you have two single crochets that are in a row here on the, on this round. So please do this all the way around. This is round number five. When you come around to number five, when you go to skip over the next one, the last one is the single crochet in the single crochet. So when you really look at it from a repeat perspective is that the next one here is a single crochet so you have your two that are in a row. Please slip stitch to the first one and that will conclude round number five. So at this point you should have 20 single crochets. So one and two, three, four and etc. and then 10 chain two spaces. Let's begin round number six. So we have a nice easy round coming ahead. So come right to the next chain two space and slip stitch and then need you to chain three. So one, two, three and in the same space I want you to put in four more double crochets. So one, two, three and four. Now you're just gonna immediately just skip over. Let me just finish that last one. That's what happens when you accidentally leave a loop behind. So what's gonna happen is in the next chain two space you'll just put in five uh, double crochets. So in each space put five double crochets and then join it to the beginning chain three when you get around. So let's move on here and I'll see you in round number seven in a moment. Round number seven, 
right where you're sitting you want to use the space that's between the two groups. So when you go to chain one you'll put a single crochet into that same space and then you're going to chain two. One and two and then skipping two stitches but just look at the middle one of the grouping of five that's the one you want. So if you skip two stitches it's the same stitch. So single crochet there, chain two and then come in between the group. Okay and then chain two. So if you skip two stitches you'll end up in the middle one of the next group and I need you to do that all the way around. So just play within the, between the groups and in the middle stitch of the group. And it's with single crochets followed by chain two and I'll see you at the end of this round. Make sure you just join it to the beginning of the first single crochet when you get there. So just finished round number seven. Off camera I am counting the number of, of spaces. So there's 20 spaces that were there. So that's something I am doing without you watching me doing. So number eight. You're going to slip stitch to the next chain two space and then chain three. So one, two, three. That's your first double crochet and then I need you to put in two more double crochets into that same spot. So the repeat pattern all the way around this one is that in the next chain two space put three double crochet and etc. So three double crochet in each chain two space all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round. Let's begin the ninth round. So we're just in the top of the first chain three. So we have these spaces that are between the, the groups of three and we have the middle stitch that makes up the group of three. So it's just exactly what we did before. The difference is, is that it's just not as many skip stitches. So right where we are just chain one and you're gonna come into the space that is separating the two groups and single crochet and then you're only gonna chain one this time. So chain one you'll skip the next um, stitch that is this chain three. So you come to the middle one of the group of three and single crochet. Then chain one and go in between the space. Okay, the three groups. So go in the space between. Chain one and then come into the middle one of the grouping of three. Then chain one, go into the space between them and chain one and go into the middle one of the grouping of three and do that all the way around for round number nine. So let's begin the next round. So round number 10. So we're gonna be introducing popcorns and V stitches for this round. So in order to start you're going to come to the next chain one space and just slip stitch over. Now we're going to start off and we're gonna be doing popcorns and V stitches. To do the first popcorn you're going to just chain two and in the same space a popcorn. So in the popcorn consists of three double crochets. So put three double crochets into the space first and then take the hook out and go to the first one of the grouping of three. So ignore that chain two and just go into there. So go from the front to the back and grab that loop and pull through. And you're going to then chain one to close it and that will lock it. So you're gonna come to the next chain one space and the next chain one space will be a V stitch. In order to get the popcorn to really work the V stitch has to be a half double crochet followed by a chain one and a half double crochet into the same stitch. Okay. So here's the repeat pattern. The next one will be a popcorn. So you'll just put in three double crochet. So one, two, and three. Drop it, come to the first one of the three, pick it back up, pull it through, chain one to lock it and then move on to the next chain one space which will be a V stitch which will be a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet and I need you to do this all the way around for round number 10 and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming around in number 10 the last space if you're keeping the right counts will be a, a V stitch and then you're just going to join it to the top of the first popcorn. Now I have a tip in the pattern that when you go to use the popcorns just use the chain one space that's on top of the popcorns in order to be consistent and so this creates a natural bend at the top of the hat and we're moving on to round number 11 next. Let's begin in round number 11. 
Before we begin we need to go around the first post and which is the popcorn. So to do that we're just gonna come in from the side and back out the other side and keeping this in the front and you're just going to slip stitch. And so that will help it to make it look consistent with the rest of the stitches. So now you're going to chain three. So one, it's gonna be a little tight, one, two, and three. So this is considered now a front post um, double crochet. In the chain one space that separates the two legs of the V-stitch, you are going to apply then three double crochet. So one, two, and three. Now the next popcorn you're gonna make that a front post double crochet. So just go around the post and just So the next popcorn is going to be a front post double crochet. So wrap the hook and go into the side of the one side and back out the other so that the popcorn is in front of your hook. Pull through and then double crochet as normal and that will keep it following up. So now you're gonna go into the chain one space of the V-stitch for three double crochet. And then front post double crochet around the post of the popcorn that is next. And I need you to do that all the way around for round number 11. So I'm coming around on number 11 and I'm going to attach to the first front post double crochet or double crochet front post. And now we're going to move on to round number 12 which we're gonna start doing some reduction of stitches. Let's begin round number 12. We're going to do a reduction of stitches from 80 down to 72 which will make it a little bit more comfortable for the forehead. So we're going to chain one and you'll put a single crochet in that one plus the next seven in a row. So just start counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven is the next one. Now the next two are together. So just pull through and the next one pull through and you have three loops pull through all three. So the repeat pattern for the remaining of this round is going to be eight in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then the next two are together. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 12. As we finish up round number 12, the last two stitches and that's just a matter of keeping the pattern is going to be two together. And so then there was eight before that. So just make sure that you keep that in mind so that when you get around you have your right stitch counts. We're now going to just take a look at the diagram that I made for you and we're going to move on to round number 13. So round number 13, 14, 15, and 16 is going to set us up for that particular um, arrow stitching that we're gonna have in the future. So right where we're sitting right now is round number 12. I didn't put the two together stitches um, that are physically here. They're, I just put in a single crochet row so just so that you understand it. So the counts are right. So when we go to start the round number 13 we need to put in a double crochet round. And round number 15 it's a double crochet round and it's the other two rounds that are going to create that stitching. So let's just go step by step. So round number 13, chain three and one double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. So round number 13, just chain three as I said and then just starting in the next stitch just place one double crochet in each of the stitches all the way around and then join it to the beginning uh, chain three when you get it all the way around. So I'll see you at the end of this round in just a moment. So as we move on to round number 14, so I've already gone all the way around off camera for round number 13. When we go to start the next round what we're going to do is that we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet into the top of the first chain three. This is going to be a front post treble and right where we are if you look down follow it straight down one and two and then just watch where the base of this goes. So just go one, two and go three back. Now don't confuse this join as a stitch. So just continue there. Once you've located that you're going to single crochet into the very next one. So this one counts as a stitch that it's sitting in front of. So you'll single 
crochet in the front and then you'll do a front post treble into the next one. So you're gonna skip one and then go into here. Single crochet the next one and then come into here. So you're skipping every other one down here but also on here you're front post trebling and then single crocheting into uh, every other one as well. So let's keep an eye on this and let's go on for round number 14. Let's start round number 14. So what we have to do is chain one and you'll single crochet in the first. Now as I said in the in the diagram we're gonna come straight down so one two so one two and so we're back on the single crochet row. So don't forget that the join looks like that it's a separate stitch. So we're gonna come down so this is gonna be one and then two and then this is the third one back and that's the one you wanna play in. So we are going to do this as a double treble. So you wrap the hook three times and take your time doing it and then you'll just come in and do a front post treble or sorry front post double treble around that single crochet. So you're gonna pull through and then you'll pull through two and, and two and two and two. Now this one will count as the very next stitch that it's gonna sit in front of so you'll single crochet in the next. So now that we've located the first one the rest of them will fall in line. So just wrap the hook three times and then just coming back here and look for skip one and go to the next one. So this as I said this is the join and the single crochet. So it looks like it's two but it's only one and you'll go around that and then you'll pull through Those are crow crows in the background. We have some nests here. So we're gonna skip this one because that's gonna sit in front of it and then single and I'll show you one more time. So wrapping three times. So once you have it established you're basically skipping every other one down here and you're doing the front post double treble as I mentioned and you'll do that all the way around. So take your time, enjoy the journey and I'll see you at the end of number 14 in just a moment. So I'm just coming all the way around. You're gonna hear the dog in the background. She's barking at the chipmunk. So what we have here is that we, this is where we did the join but when we went back here it was before the join. So even though we're kind of over that section now we have to fill in that spot. So I'm just doing my front post troubles and I have the right stitch counts but what I would concentrate on the most if you if something is wrong just throw something in um, and just make sure that you maintain the stitch counts as you know it. And so then that will be your last stitch and then you're just going to join to the first like that. And so it should look pretty consistent as you finish. So let's move on to the next round, round number 15 and let's do that next. In round number 15 we're gonna do a straight double crochet up. So just chain three and then just move it on and just put in one double crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. So this will be the background for where the next front post trebles will lean in the future to complete the arrow stitch. So just one double crochet in each all the way around. As we move on to round number 16. So I've already just done the double crochet in advance. So what I was designing this I was actually trying to maintain the same idea of coming back. So you notice how we started and we went back here. So when I started to do and step forward I stepped forward the same amount of stitches that I thought I needed and it was making these appear vertical. So when we go to step forward here we're going to just chain up one and we're going to step forward and see this chain three. I need you to go to the third one over. If you go to the second one which almost feels like it's where it should be what happens is that it pulls the hat around and makes this a vertical stitch instead of Di uh, uh, diagonal. So what I need you to do is that we're gonna chain up and we're just gonna chain up one and then we're going to go to the third one after this chain three and that's where we're gonna start our journey and we'll still continue with the single crochet in the next and then just reaching on over. So this one is an exaggerated um, diagonal that you need to do in order to have this work. Let's begin round number 16. So I'm gonna ask you to trust me because it's gonna feel so wrong in every level possible. Um, I felt it was wrong also um, but it actually works. So you're gonna chain up one and you're going to then just front post treble. So remember what I said it's the third one. So here's where the chain three is. So it's the third one. So one, two and three. So it's way over here and that's where you're going to begin your front post trebles. And you're gonna go right around that treble, that treble itself. 
and then you'll come back. So you're stepping way forward and then the very next one is going to be a single crochet. And then you're gonna do that like you were. So now that you got the first one established you're gonna go to the one after that. And that counts as the one that is sitting in front of. Okay and then you'll just single crochet in the next. And basically it's the same thing but just stepping forward instead of stepping back and you'll see the arrow stitching is going to happen naturally. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 16. So when you're coming back all the way around you're essentially extending way past the join section just to come back when you get the stitch all the way in and then you'll end up back to where you should be. And remember that we started off with the front post treble. So we are going to end with the single and then just join it then to the front post treble to finish. And you can see it looks pretty seamless. Let's move on to the 17th round. As we move on we're now going to do round number 17 and we're going to do a decrease to get us to 68 stitches instead of 72. So you're going to chain one and you're gonna put the first two together. So just going into this first stitch and the next and then pull through all three loops and that's together. So two just became one. And now you're going to put in 16 single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So once the 16 are in you're gonna repeat that again. So the next two will be come together and then again the next 16 and you'll do that all the way around and this is round number 17. So just finished round number 17. I've already done the join. So round number 18 is more of a visual um, eye candy. So you're just gonna chain up one and stay in the back loops of all the stitches and just place in one single crochet into each of the back loops and this per, uh, makes a little line in the front of it that's more visual than anything. So please do that all the way around one single crochet in the back loop of every stitch going around. I'm all the way around round number 18. Round number 19 is the final before we start doing the brim and on the very final slip stitch we're gonna add a third strand and I'll talk about that when we get there. So round number 19 is just chain three and then just move into the next stitch place one double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of this round. We'll talk about adding the third strand and what you need to watch for in the pattern itself. So I'll do that next in a moment. So off camera this has been sitting in a salad bowl and I've been using the outside. So as we finish off round number 19 I need to get a third strand. So what I'm going to do is use the first like the interior strand of this ball and just kind of loop it and add it in. So when I go to slip stitch to the top of the chain three not only am I gonna grab the two that are already there but I'm also gonna grab the new loop here and I'm gonna put that back in my salad bowl. So I just wanna grab all three and so then all three strands are now ready to go for the brim. So one, two and three. So I'm gonna put this back into the bowl and then we're gonna progress and we're now going to start with our brim. Now the other thing I wanna tell you because we are going to be using the outside of this ball and the interior this ball is gonna deplete pretty quickly and so you will notice by the end of the 25th round is that this ball is gonna get really low. So what I wanna do is that I wanna switch the third strand to the other ball that I have that has been sitting on the desk. So I'll, I'll switch to the outside of this one so that I can maintain my three strands and therefore I won't have to break open three balls and still just continue with one and you'll be very left with very little yarn at the end. Let's move now on to round number 20. As we progress now into the brim what's gonna happen is that we're gonna be changing the locations of the increase. For those that are new are regular crocheters you know that if you always increase in the same section of a round circle it ends up becoming a jagged edge as it works its way around. So what I'm doing is that I'm changing the location of the increase as we go so that it actually does more of a rounded edge. 
So let's uh, begin and we're going to start and we're gonna do an increase to get us back to 72 once again. And so you're just going to with the three strands together as one, you're just going to chain one and using the front loop only and this will create a natural bend. So you're just gonna go in the front loop only. You're going to single crochet. So you're gonna do that one and what you want to do is that that one is included as the first stitch of 16. So in the, in the next 15, so do total 16. So let's just say this is one and we're going to do an increase on the after the 16 are done. So this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So now that you have the 16 in there, the next one will be two into the same one. So one and two. So you're going to do this all the way around. So you do the next 16 and then two into the next, the next 16, two into the next and you'll do that all the way around. So you'll end up with four extra stitches which will take you to 72 stitches by the time you're done. So please do that all the way around. This is round number 20. So it just came around then on the last one, round number 20, just join it and now let's begin. Round number 21 we're gonna do another increase. So we're just gonna do it really quite lovely. And so what we're going to do is just chain up one and stay in the regular stitches now and you're gonna single crochet in the first five. So, so one, two, three, four, and five. And then once you have that done, you're gonna put two into the next. And that's gonna be your increase then going all the way around. So you'll put two into the next and then five. And that will take you all the way to 84 stitches when you get all the way back around. So please do this and I'll see you back here in a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around on number 21. And now let's increase again. So sure. let's begin number 22 right where you are. We're going to change the increase. So chain one and you're going to single crochet the first three stitches in a row. So we have one, two, and three. Then you're going to then uh, put two single crochets in the next. So one and two and here's the repeat pattern all the way around. So the next six in a row are single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then two into the next. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around but this is not gonna take you to the very final. So you're gonna have some stitches left over and you'll single crochet the remaining of those. So we'll cover that when we get there in just a moment. So just continue to single crochet the next six and then two, six and two. I'll be right back. So coming around in the end of number 22, you'll have three stitches left over and those will each be one single crochet. So please join and let's move on to round number 23 next. So number 23, you'll notice that the ball that has the two strands coming from is depleting faster. Just keep an eye on that ball and just make sure that you're not going to run out of yarn but you should be changing it probably over the end of 25 but just keep an eye. So we're gonna start 23, we're gonna change where the increase is. So just chain up one and do the first seven as single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, five, six, and seven and then the next two are then, or sorry the next one is gonna have two. So it's seven in and then the next one has two. So seven and two. Please do that all the way around, round number 23. So just finishing up number 24. So I'm just finishing up number 23. We're now going to move on to number 24 and we're gonna change where the increase is once again. 
what we're going to do chain one and you're going to single crochet in the first four. So we have one, two, three, and four and then that's where the increase is next. So one and two and this, this is going to be where the actual um, pattern starts. So at this point you're going to then go one single crochet into the next eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then you got two into the next one. So it's going to be eight and two, eight and two and when you get all the way back around there should be some stitches left over and we'll deal with that in just a moment. So please do that same repeat all the way around. So when you get all the way around you'll have four stitches left and you'll fill in those four with single crochets in order to have the balance. So we've now just finished increasing for the entire hat and now we have to think about what we're going to do next. So we're going to at this point I'm going to release off the third strand from the ball that's depleting. Let me just bend down and get that. So I'm getting really close to the end of this one ball but I've still got lots on the other. So I'm going to change the third strand to the other ball instead and still just have only one at it here. Now if you're doing this I would actually grab the strand and cut the strand that is on the outside that um, away from this project so that the remaining is just coming from the inside just to make it more simple. So now let's continue to round number 25. Continuing on to number 25 I'm just changing over the yarn strand. So what you're going to do and this is that we're gonna use the back loops only and we're gonna use the front loops later on in the future. So just chain up one and put the when you before you do that though put it on the one that is just you're starting up again from the other ball and the other two strands and then pull those three through and that will get you started and now you can just use all three strands the new ones. So now we're going to continue and we're going to start up on the back loop only. So in the same one that we have the join. So you're gonna go in the back loop and the front loop that we're leaving empty we're gonna be using in the future. So one back loop single crochet into each stitch going all the way around. We're no longer increasing or decreasing this hat for the remaining of the project. So please do this all the way around, round number 25. So I'm finishing up number 25 you're just going to join it to the first one. Now 26, 27 and 28 you don't need to get the instructions for each one because it's all going to be the same. So just chain up one and just do one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around and then join it. So you'll do that for 26, 27 and 28 and I'm gonna leave that in your hands and I'll see you back here as we do the final round together. So do the next three rounds of one single crochet in each stitch around. Now that we have our final row 28 is done 29 is the final and what we need to do is that we need to roll this so that this line here which is the front loops that are left becomes part of the roll. And how we're gonna do that is that we're just gonna come down and we're just gonna grab the first front loop that is directly down and then you're gonna pull through and then pull through two. So you're just single crocheting around that. So come to the next one that you have and then come to the next one on the edge, put them together and single crochet. And it takes a bit of time and it gets used to actually doing this particular concept as well. So I missed a loop there so let me just pack, pull back out. So you wanna do it so that you're, you're being accurate, right? So you're just gonna come in and then pull through. And so then you continue to do that all the way around. So you just work in sequence of the loops and of the edging stitches that are here and it will pull together and then it will single crochet that brim completely into position. So I need you to do that all the way around for round number 29 and I'll meet back in just a moment. We'll just confirm on how to fasten off just in case you don't know. So let's do that next and I'll see you back here in a second. So I've just come all the way back around. The brim is now complete and I'm just going to take the three strands that are here and I've already attached it like joined it on the other side and I'm just gonna pull through. Now I'm just gonna take a tapestry needle and to hide those in. So any loose ends that I have is that I wanna take the tapestry needle and I would do one strand at a time because it'll, it, you will end up with a huge clump that you're trying to hide. 
and just carefully just take it on the inside of the brim. So dragging it inside the brim just pull on over. Just pull it into the inside and you wanna go back and forth. I've done this so many times in videos it's crazy. <laughs> it's just the way to finish right? So you're just gonna go back and forth inside the work a total of three times and you'll wanna do that with any of the strands that you have. So this is number two. This is kind of dense this particular um, yarn so it's a little more challenging to get through but it doesn't mean it's impossible right? So you wanna go back and forth a total of three times and then once you have that done you could just cut that strand down and then you can just safely trim it right to the project like that. And you'll wanna do that with any strands that you have and this here is a Summer Stunner hat and this is a design by me and I hopefully that you enjoy. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon.